睇完我哋时间够噶嘛。My members, it's about time to、um, get started. Item number one: Confirmation of minutes of、um, the last meeting. Minutes of the meeting held on November twenty-fourth、uh, have been made available to members.、Uh, we have received no proposed amendments. Unless you have any comments to make,、um, can I take the minutes as confirmed? Item two: There is no information paper issued、uh, since the last meeting. Item three: Date of next meeting and items for discussion. A visit to the cyber court. Originally,、um, it was scheduled for the 26th of February. Now it has been rescheduled to the 19th of March,、uh, Tuesday at 11 a.m.、Uh, myself,、um, Ms. M. Le Lau, Ms. Lau Beho, Mr. Um, Charles Mark, Mr. Tin Chong Kai, Mr. Lo Wei Kuo, and、uh, Mr. Alan Long、uh, will be attending the visits. Well, in the light of my experience, and normally members would not turn up、um, as、um, promised,、uh, we may end up with uh, half uh, the、um, the members.、Uh, so please、um, block out the diary and、uh, attend the、um, visit. Our next、um, regular meeting is scheduled for the fifth of April, twenty-thirteen.、Um, there may be some problems because、uh, there is a、um, delegation, there is a fact-finding visit、um, to Korea、um, under the、um, Environment and Environmental Affairs Panel. So this may be rescheduled. We have.、Um, So many items for discussion.、Um, we have uh, received uh, some input、uh, from members regarding the agenda items. As members are aware, we、uh, would have、um, additional items for each meeting.、Uh, we would、um, tend to accept、uh, members' proposals, and we would try to、um, fit in、uh, all these items. And there are more. Items、um, to come. The annual report on cyber port.、Uh, this is in the outstanding list. Now this is、uh, something that、uh, we have agreed with the administration. There is nothing special. It's an annual、uh, feature. Annual report on cyber port.、Um, hence the visit. And Miss、um, Claudia Ball.、Um, Wrote in、uh, on the 18th and 27th of、um, February. She is、um, rather enthusiastic in putting forward、um, items for discussion. She would like to bring up this item: CNC TV, Hong Kong Voice Express, and also、um, the、uh, breaches of、uh, the regulation and guidelines by、uh, the ATV. Miss Cordiembo, Chairman, CNC TV. Now we have、um, we. we We、uh, are able to receive、uh, overseas channels. So what's so special about CNC TV? Now CNC is、um, very much the mouthpiece of、um, the central authorities. This is one country, two systems, and our airwaves are being utilized、um, to to、um, propagate、um, the official positions、uh, and official stance. Uh, in the form of this、uh, program, I do have trouble with that.、Uh, in particular, the the subtitles are in simplified、um, Chinese characters. So I hope that、uh, members would have some discussion on the suitability of this particular program. Right, this、uh, Hong Kong Voice Express of、uh, CNC TV. We understand that. Um, the pay TV stations do enjoy editorial independence and, and also a freedom、um, in in their broadcasting.、Uh, the CA has not received any complaints, so they are not、um, going to follow up on this uh, because um, if uh, someone raises doubt about a particular. Uh, program, uh, they will have to do something about it. Now the、um, CA has not received any complaints、uh, regarding this particular channel. 
and they wouldn't like to interfere with uh, editorial freedom. Now we do have the legislation in place. We do have um, the the um, code of practice in place. So you might wish to have a look at these. Now, if uh, you like to bring this up for discussion, it's fine by me. We have a very limited time here. Now, the other thing is about um, the ATVs are uh, breaches of um, the um, the code. They have been fined at two hundred sixty thousand dollars already. I think this is really a classic example in terms of fines imposed on uh, terrestrial TV. I'm not sure. Uh, what more, uh, Ms. Mo is um, suggesting uh, here that uh, they will uh, have um, a renewal coming up in 2015, and I think uh, we can uh, certainly bring this up uh, when the time comes. We don't really have enough time to uh, start um, another item on um, the um, the fines imposed on ATV of uh, two hundred sixty thousand dollars. It's not the case that we shouldn't talk about it, it's just that we have to prioritize given the time available. Now this is um, um, the the way that, that um, I like to, to handle um, the situation, although this doesn't represent our, our, my own view. If um, members are in agreement that um, we should discuss this, um, then we can uh, put this on the list of outstanding items. Mr. Xin Chong Kai, uh, Chairman, are we going to bring uh, the items up one by one? Yes, uh, we are uh, bringing them up one by one. Um, certainly, you would be um, given the chance to, to bring up your own item. Ms. Kodiembo, yes, uh, CNC TV, uh, Hong Kong Voice Express, uh, broadcast uh, on a pay TV channel. Now, you said that uh, CA has not received uh, any complaints. I think that's because um, there is very little audience and nobody knows about it. Even being Pao Date, it doesn't know much about it. It is um, the um, Xinhua News Agency that, that um, issued a uh, press release that, that um, was brought to my attention. I think this is um, really um, too much of a waste. And this is also something of um, brainwashing. There is a very little audience today, but um, this can be edited um, and put together as um, a package uh, for national education. Now, ATV, the fine of $260,000 is uh, neither here nor there for such a big broadcast. And they are committing all these breaches, and they they are seeing all these fines being imposed. That the, the license uh, will be up for renewal in 2015. That this is only at the beginning of uh, 2013. There are still two more years to go. Um, the license is up for renewal by the end of 2015. I think um, this is really testing uh, our patience. Mr. Wang Teng Kuang, Chairman. Now we keep saying that um, broadcasters enjoy editorial independence. Why is it that uh, someone in our panel uh, would like to bring this up? Now you talk about uh, brainwashing. Are you bring? Are you doing the brainwashing, or are you being brainwashed? I think we do have um, the freedom of speech. For someone to bring up an issue like this is uh, either naive um, or puerile. We have uh, three items on the agenda for today, and I have to uh, handle the items uh, suggested uh, by members for the agenda. So I hope that you would um, maximize the time available. Um, we I will end the meeting um, at 4.30 sharp. So unless I have any further comments, um, these two items will be deferred. And time permitting, uh, we will put this on the agenda. We will be writing to the CA, the Communications Authority, regarding the um, program Hong Kong Voice Express, um, aired at um, a paid TV channel. As regards um, ATV, 
I find it very difficult to do anything about it. Are you unhappy with、um, the level of fine, or is it the case that、um, the a- the、uh, broadcaster、um, should not、um, exist anymore, given all the fines、um, that have been imposed? Under the TV code,、um, there are all these、uh, stipulations. You can you can express some、um, dissatisfaction with、um, the the level of fines, but I don't think we can. Or we should make it an item for discussion here. In future, members may、uh, bring up、uh, other programs、uh, for discussion. I don't want to give the perception that、uh, we're interfering with、um, the editorial independence. I will. I'm against this、um, personally, but as chairman of this panel, I, I have to bring this up、uh, for members' discussion. And I, I, I'm going to tell you what is possible and what is not possible. I hope that members would appreciate that it would be very difficult for us to、um, to to include the items in the agenda for the Hong Kong Voice Express. We can send a writer letter to CA, but what about ATV?、Uh, do you think you, sh- you should、uh, include this、uh, in the agenda? If there are contrary views,、uh, I think we have to、uh, put it to the vote. I don't really want to make any ruling myself here, but I can tell you. That、um, we may not be able to fit this in at the next meeting, or even the, the meeting after next, because of this、uh, backlog of、um, items, and we may this、um, uh, may may not be、uh, fitted in until 2015, possibly. Mr. Albert Chen, Chairman, I think this has to do. It must have、uh, something to do with、uh, the legislation, the, the policy, and so on. If、um, a broadcaster has、uh, breached certain regulations,、uh, then we can ask、um, the the communications authority to conduct some some study and come back to us、um, as to whether we should have、uh, a meeting for discussion. If you're not happy with、uh, the programming, I mean, I'm not happy with、um, some of the programs on ATV, TVB, or RTHK, or even commercial radio. Or the metro radio, for that matter. The thing is, if you want to talk about the programming, well, I'm not happy with the whole world, and I don't think we can have、um, a 24-hour meeting、um, covering all these items. I think、um, we should judge an item by、uh, whether there is any breaches of regulations. I'm not sure whether members have read the. Statement、uh, issued by the CA regarding、um, the fines、uh, imposed on ATV. It is, b- it's been made very clear by the CA regarding、um, the reason why the fine was imposed. At the、uh, after seventh meeting、uh, in Feb in February 2013, a decision was taken.、Um, the fine was based on that decision. In this、um, CA. Statement. It has、uh, outlined、um, the ins and outs of the case and the level of fine that was imposed uh, under uh, certain chapters and verse. And I think that、um, we can have a look at this、uh, particular statement or the the、uh, synopsis of this、um, statement published in the newspaper. I think we can、uh, put it to the CA in this regard. Ah, this called the MO. Well, about the、uh, $260,000 fine imposed on ATV,、um, the allegation was that uh, uh, was that ATV claimed to uh, have a six. 60-40、uh, proportion of the、um, viewers' rating compared to、uh, TVB. It has to do with the broadcasting policy in Hong Kong. Chairman, if you cannot make a decision, then I suggest we put this to a vote. I'm not debating this、uh, with you now. If we go on debating like this,、uh, this meeting will not end. My decision is that we will write to the. Uh, Uh, CA、um, stating members'、uh, queries、uh, in this regard. So, Ms. Claudia Mo, please state clearly your queries, and we th- will then write to the authority. That's it, Mr. Wang Tingkuang. Well, I think if Ms. Mo、um, has views on this matter, she should write the、uh, letter herself. There is no reason for the ITB panel to write this letter. Well, she is a member of this panel. 
but I'm also a member of the panel. Well, what if she wants to write it, but I don't? Well, it's just a trivial matter um, that we write a letter. Chairman, if your decision is to write such a letter, please state uh, which members are involved. Of course, we will do that. Well, let's not uh, throw further into this issue because we've spent 16 minutes on it already. Well, next matter, Mr. Sin Chong Kai uh, has written in about uh, 3G uh, communication license upon the uh, uh, expiry of licenses. Uh, what will happen to the allocation of uh, the spectrum? Now, Mr. Charles Mock has also written in um, requesting for a public hearing to be held. Well, the two of them are, mem um, are representatives of the IT sector. Well, please let me finish. Well, um, during the last term, you uh, represented the IT sector. Well, now the, uh, both of you are experts, and um, two of you have written in uh, requesting for public hearing. All right, I have said that. On this issue, uh, let's hope that uh, we can allocate time for this matter in the uh, future meetings. As for the four um, mobile network operators, which have jointly written the letter to this panel. Well, in fact, I have not received it. Well, you two have received it. I take your word for it. I haven't received it. The, the two of you have received it. We received a letter from uh, you and also Mr. Sin Chung Kai, but we have not received this letter from the four uh, operators. The Secretariat has uh, also not received it, but never mind. Well, if we can have um, a, a time slot available, we will hold a public hearing. I hope this can be done before the end of the consultation period. That's the 11th of April. No, we won't be able to make it in time. No. But this actually affects um, many people. Those applying for renewal of licenses, so on and so forth. I think we should uh, expedite the discussion of this matter. Uh, well, uh, we'll try our best, but if we um, reprioritize the agenda items, then well, everything seems to um, enjoy priority. Well, in fact, um, well, in originally um, there is a time slot on the 5th of April, but well, Chairman. Uh, if other members would like to go on the delegation visit, so be it. But we do need to make changes. But Chairman and Deputy Chairman uh, have also joined, uh, signed up for the visit. All right, so let's have a hearing towards the end of March. Let's res reserve time at the end of March. But. It seems that uh, we're really short of time, so do come back for this meeting towards the end of March. Chairman, you're not going to hold a public hearing uh, on public holidays, right? But Mr. Sin, we need to um, see if uh, we will clash with other meetings. We cannot just um, put our meetings first. It's not up for the two of you to uh, have the say. We need to avoid clashes with other meetings. So can you give me an available time slot so that there is no clash with any other meeting? We'll try to make arrangements. That's it. If you trust me, I will try to make such arrangement. All right. Okay, um, another matter, uh, IPRO-8, well, it's been said about this, this online uh, learning support scheme. Again, we need to reserve some time for this to be discussed. And it's really difficult to um, put it on the agenda. I think um, we can discuss this in June soonest. But uh, let's see if we can do it in May. Uh, we have many items. We have three items today already. Yes?
Can we have another meeting? Yes, we can have a special meeting. Chairman, I suggest we have a special meeting. Let's save the argument. Yes, Mr. Charles Moore. Well, can I say something first? Because I wrote this letter. My concern is that originally, if the meeting is to be held in June, then originally um, they uh, should come in June or uh, anyway. Uh, we want to expedite the, uh, the matter because uh, um, this article in Ming Pao was published about the uh, termination of uh, service, and uh, we we have not received this. Uh, it, um, document. So um, it, there is already a problem here, and there are serious allegations like uh, missing funds, so on and so forth. And last time during the public hearing, uh, when delegations came and uh, said something about uh, whether the independent account had been set up, I think that uh, there is uh, some uh, sort of mis um, uh, there, there is a possibility of misleading the, the panel. So we should not wait until uh, uh, May or June before the meeting is held because it involves a large sum of money and I think that um, false representation may have been made at this panel. Well, we really have limited time. Uh, you want this meeting to be held in May, and for the previous item, you want a public hearing, and the, the public hearing should be held before the end of the consultation period uh, in March. And then there is also this uh, uh, visit, uh, and I need to go, and I seem to be be, be um, blamed for it. But you are representing the sector, Chairman. I just want to say that. You know, I, uh, no, I I don't intend to go to the uh, South Korea trip. Um, I am also a member of this panel and also a member of the EA panel as well. Well, I never said that the meeting would be cancelled. We definitely will hold the meeting, but uh, you shouldn't appoint um, a time for the meeting. Uh, the EA panel would be going to South Korea to look at the uh, waste management uh, facility. So who can come to this meeting? Well, who makes this decision? We have not yet uh, appointed a time for the meeting, and uh, we cannot um, accommodate your schedule. It's ridiculous. Let's not quarrel any further about the uh, sacking of IPRO A in the uh, online uh, support uh, learning support scheme. Uh, that's the issue raised by you. Well, don't say something like that. Okay, let's listen to other members and see what they think about the time, Mr. Poor Chair. Chairman, if we are to hold a special meeting, uh, there is a threshold, um, and that is the urgency of the matter. Of course, this is a serious matter. Uh, we are, we're also concerned about it, but. Uh, in terms of urgency, uh, this is not very urgent. It's more like a post-mortem uh, of the event rather than uh, something that requires our decision to be made immediately. So I don't see um, the urgency in this matter, and I don't see the need to hold a special meeting before June. So unless everyone agrees, uh, I am all right with it, with it, but I don't think this is the mainstream or the majority view, and I don't think that we sh uh, I don't think we should uh, depart from the uh, usual practice and uh, the due consideration to be given when a special meeting is proposed. Any other views on this IPOA issue? Yes, Ho Shen Yin. Thank you, Chairman. Actually, I uh, think uh, that uh, there is. No urgency in uh, handling th this matter because it's been uh, it's on the agenda anyway. So, like Mr. Porcher said, does it uh, affect um, the population immediately? I, I don't see the urgency. I think uh, we need more justification, Mr. Charles Mock. Chairman, I think there is urgency in this matter because um, some information is not available to us. Uh, it's uh, in the newspaper article, but not available to our panel members, including the letter about the termination of service. We only see two paragraphs in this newspaper article. We know nothing else. 
The urgency is uh, that inclusion in April A, um, uh, uh, the service contract will be terminated very soon, and the um, scheme will be taken over by the um, uh, Boys and Girls Association. So you cannot say that the public will not be affected. They will be affected. So if the media uh, has have already uh, revealed this letter, why can't we um, have this information too? Well, let me handle this issue uh, this way. We'll write a letter to the administration um, about this issue, stating our concerns and demanding them to explain to us, and we will see what their explanations are before. Well, we, we were going to have this uh, meeting anyway, but uh, let's write to them first. We should not just follow uh, what's published in the newspaper. Somebody may like to do that, but we must read the explanation and justification first. So just ask them first. Let them reply uh, in writing before we decide when to hold this meeting. All right, so much for this part. So let's begin uh, the uh, Let's move uh, on to the agenda proper. We have three items to be discussed today. One is uh, RTHK's community involvement broadcasting service and the role in the future of RTHK. Now, um, some members are concerned about um, the incident involving uh, Mr. Forever C, and um, some members also received a letter about RTHK. So that the um, concern of some members. So each member will be limited to three minutes. But uh, the main topic is a community involvement broadcasting service. For the latter part of the topic, the role and future of RTHK, well, you may ask question on, on the uh, issue that's uh, under the, been under the limelight recently. So uh, three minutes for each member. Please be concise. Now, the representatives of the administration uh, are now seated. So, uh, we have uh, Ms. Susie Ho, Permanent Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development, and Mr. Joe Wong, Deputy Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development, and Mr. Aaron Liu, Principal Assistant Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development, and from RTHK, Mr. Roy Tang, Director of Broadcasting, Ms. Uh, Leonia Tai, Deputy Director of Broadcasting, and Mr. Tai Kin Man, Deputy Director of Broadcasting. So I'll invite Director or PS to walk us through the paper before uh, members uh, ask questions. Thank you. Chairman, uh, RTHA is a public service broadcaster of Hong Kong, and um, the government uh, has um, been tasked, uh, has uh, formulated safeguards and appropriate resources for RTHK to serve, uh, to fulfill its missions. Now, uh, the RTHK ch charter uh, was promulgated in August 2010, and um, the RTHK is now um, uh, having a number of projects underway, including uh, digital broadcast, audio broadcasting, digital terrestrial television broadcasting, digital media asset management system, and a new broadcasting hall in Changquan, also and so forth. Uh, we believe the RTHK will continue to adhere to the RTHK Charter, um, to, um, uh, uh, which enshrines the editorial independence of Hong Kong and uh, to enhance the um, uh, public, service, public broadcasting service in Hong Kong. Uh, in fact, uh, I'll defer to the director uh, to um, say something. All right, we have a number of members waiting to ask questions. Uh, any more? Mr. Porsche as well. All right, they'll draw a line here. Mr. Yu Si Wing as well. Okay, hi, come down. Okay, so Dr. Kwokaki. Chairman, thank you. I'm not a member of this panel myself. Regarding the future of RTHK, I'm sure members are concerned about its editorial independence since Mr. Roy Tang, um, Director of um, Broadcasting, uh, has um, assumed office. Um, there, are, there are so many um, uh, rumors about uh, RTHK, uh, like um, Electrical Review, 
is um, suggested to be um, axed, uh, to be replaced uh, by some other programs. And there are also rumours that um, on the uh, 2nd of September at the uh, City Forum, when uh, Ms. Anna Wu and uh, Ms. Daddy Mm, uh, were absent uh, from the uh, city forum, you placed um, two empty chairs um, to the embarrassment of the government. And also, uh, Mr. Forever C um, differed uh, from you in terms of um, editorial principle, um, and also um, he differed uh, from you with regard to uh, Natural Review, and he um, he 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 never got past um, the acting um, stage uh, in his posting. RTHK is um, a public broadcaster. It is um, watched uh, by the whole of Hong Kong. If uh, this new director and it's not a new director anymore, you've been you've been there for some time. If the members of the public are supportive of RTHK, and there is no reason. Um, why the um, editorial independence uh, should be interfered with, and this is a really serious matter. So, will you clarify um, regarding all these uh, serious uh, matters? Can you clarify whether they um, they uh, they have any truth in them, Chairman? If um, members uh, can give me more time, well, we have uh, we're very strict with the time, three minutes. Um, and you may supplement uh, later on as uh, we go along. Chairman, I will uh, answer uh, the question seriously that regarding interference uh, with uh, editorial independence, and there is, uh, this is unfounded. Um, the director is um, the editor-in-chief uh, of the RTA tree according to the charter, and I have to be um, um, answerable to um, the, um, the, the editors. Um, we have a committee every Thursday, uh, all the editorial staff, um, the producers, and uh, the program teams. If um, there are doubts uh, cast on the um, editorial decision, uh, this uh, committee would be um, discussing the matters. Dr. Kwok, now if uh, you interfere with uh, the programming, you would do so in that committee, wouldn't you? All right, next um, is Claudia Mo. Chairman, thank you. Now, the um, director said that all these allegations are unfounded. Now, basically, he's saying that um, the RTHK staff um, are lying to, to us and also um, to the director. Now, there are three uh, allegations. First, uh, there is a lack of um, Journalistic uh, ethics. It doesn't know anything about um, journalism. The empty chair uh, incident um, on City Forum. Are you are you casting doubt on this uh, because this would be embarrassing the government? Are you uh, really axing um, the electrical review, or are you uh, trying to uh, produce a program that would be shining the shoes of government officials? Third, RTHK. Uh, by the end of the year, we'll try out um, the digital broadcast. Uh, previously, it was eight hours, um, and now we're talking about eight, 16 hours, double the, the amount of time. Now, you, you are turning um, all these programs into uh, digital TV programs. Um, furthermore, uh, um, the RTHK is an overlord. Um, that the the um, they, they are trying to um, change um, the, the format uh, involving uh, Empress Dowager, and, and you are trying to change the format. You are uh, imposing a ring of terror on, on the staff. Now, why do you have to come up with the idea of a journey to the West uh, uh, idea? Mr. Forever Z is um, the, the last uh, gatekeeper. Is it the case that um, he refused to accept this political mission? And he is um, turning down this uh, political mission that, that uh, so, so much so that uh, he, he wasn't given any promotion. Um, fourth, the staff of RTHK are saying that um, they are getting impatient with uh, Roy Tang. His um, management style is um, actually cracking down 
on the RTHK on behalf of the government. Uh, the RTHK staff welcome her with um, black um, carpet. Uh, the staff of RTHK feel very frustrated, feel heartbroken. His uh, tenure of office uh, will be unlimited. Is RTHK turned into a fifth um, uh, for a Roy Tank? What is the role of RTHK? What is the way forward uh, for RTHK? Is it going to be dictated by Roy Tang alone? Thank you. Ten seconds, um, Director. Well, uh, civil servants uh, have to be neutral according to um, the civil service role. We, we, we don't have to bear any uh, political responsibility. Mr. Charles Mock, well, Chairman, I'm sure that um, many members would put um, this question. Perhaps I, I'd like to uh, switch to another question. Now, in the um, outsourcing um, scheme, they uh, support um, uh, the, this, um, this program um, in which um, they are supporting uh, some of the up and coming uh, comic. Um, writers, and in this um, outsourcing scheme, where all these people uh, are hired um, on a contract basis. Now, but I heard some complaints that um, the government is hogging um, the, the copyright. It, it sounds uh, really weird because all these uh, productions may involve uh, new ideas and they produce um, the, the programs and they are subject to a lot of um, constraints and they and they would rather start all over again instead of working for RTHK. Now, the idea of um, using the taxpayers' money is um, not so much to uh, monopolize um, the, the copyright for any commercial gains. Can you uh, tell us um, whether you are going to review the, the, um, the, the uh, constraints on copyright um, in this uh, particular scheme so that um, the producers will be able to um, own their own copyright and once uh, they've started, um, they they will uh, utilize their, their own um, um, their own uh, copyright for further use. Mr. Tai, well, Chairman, now this um, program is a um, digital comic um, program. Now, this is a um, program funded by taxpayers' money, so the copyright uh, belongs to RTHK. In particular, uh, in broadcasting, we, we have to own uh, this particular copyright. We are, in fact, um, li liaising with um, the, um, the, the, um, the contract staff, and if uh, they want to develop um, their own expertise overseas, they will be able to do so. What they, they want to use their own uh, copyright in Hong Kong. They, they want to. It's no use uh, for you to to monopolize um, the, the copyright. Why don't you allow them a free hand uh, going forward, Mr. Tai? Well, during the outsourcing um, process, uh, they have signed an, an agreement with us. Well, but if this goes against um, the idea of helping them, now the the, the thing is, um, you should put this. Um, under review, are you going to review that? Yes, uh, we will. We will go away and consider that. All right, Mr. Sin Chung Kai, Chairman. Question for the director: You, you talked about um, the Thursday editorial meeting. As um, the statutory editor in chief, uh, will you tell us, please? Uh, you may have um, the role of an editor in chief, but uh, you are parachuted um, to RTHK. Now, we can't see any um, results of um, the editorial committee. We don't know about the agenda, uh, what is being discussed, and so on. Is there any way in which you will be able to tell the members of the public that um, your decisions are consistent with um, the decisions taken in, in the past? Or is it the case that uh, once you've been parachuted, you overturn the convention of RTHK, you've taken over the power and so on? I'm fair. I'm being fair to you. I give you two minutes. Thanks very much, Mr. Sin. Now, this uh, programming um, committee of RTHK uh, engage, engages in discussion 
on the basis of um, RTHK Charter, which talks about editorial independence and, and the editorial principles that they, we have to abide by. We also have um, the code uh, for the producers, um, which include all the do's and don'ts. Before I um, uh, assumed office, I'm sure that all previous directors and uh, all the directorate staff, the producers, and um, the pro programming team abided by these two documents to, to, to decide whether the decisions uh, were uh, fair or not. The members raised um, these specific questions. Um, RTHK, the empty chair, all along, nobody considered that um, the embarrassment caused um, to the relevant people was a major factor. As a public broadcaster, of course, we don't want to cause an embarrassment. But if uh, we invite uh, someone to come along, and, and they are not coming along, then then um, the embarrassment caused to them, uh, the RTH doesn't have to be held responsible. The the key thing about the um, committee is that um, there are three self-contradictory. Um, explanations regarding the empty chair. Now, what the committee is concerned about is that um, when the editorial team um, handles the matter, it cannot handle the matter lightly, because this would um, make a difference to the reputation of RTHK. As to um, headliner, the well, will you give us some um, reply in writing, please? Okay, Mr. James Doe has written in, uh, highlighting uh, all these um, issues. I'm sure that everyone has a copy. I think um, this is uh, these um, include um, the allegations um, against uh, Mr. Roy Tang, the director of broadcasting. I'm sure that you must have um, a letter yourself. If not, uh, we can certainly make it available to you. Uh, regarding all these uh, allegations. Uh, why don't you uh, explain them and respond to them? Now, you, you didn't you didn't say whether there was any discussion regarding the, uh, the empty chair at City Forum. I, I thought there was. So perhaps uh, you might wish to uh, respond to all these allegations. If you find the allegations and found that you're welcome to uh, make a response there. And Ms. Claudia Ball uh, raised um, the three allegations that you might wish um, to, to come back to that um, if time permits, because we, we cannot really eat into other members' time. Mr. Albert Chen, Chairman. Mr. James Toll's um, letter includes uh, all the salient points uh, regarding uh, RTHK staff's um, sentiments. I hope that um, the Director will respond to them. I hope that um, the director would tell us. You have to be uh, very careful with uh, your position. You are a civil servant yourself, but this um, director of broadcasting, on the question of occupying uh, central, on the question of um, communist, um, uh, communist ruling Hong Kong. Now, th this is a very, these are very sensitive uh, matters. We are talking about uh, freedom of um, expression. You're not merely occupy the position as a civil servant. You are uh, taking up a very, very sensitive position. There is no con effect in what you what you do. That you may be in this um, senior position with um, great influence, and behind closed door, you can have a lot of ideas yourself. But whether the people of Hong Kong feel uh, the same sentiments is very important. You have to come out and reach out to the members of the public. You simply cannot be um, staying in, a, in, in the comfort of your own uh, office. Many people would like to, to reform or revamp RTHK also, but in revamping RTHK, you have to make sure that um, the, the freedom um, will not be undermined. Now, the key thing is that um, you're an outsider uh, leading um, the, the, the insiders. Many people feel that um, this is a political appointment, that this is a, a political mission that, that you, you have. 
But since uh, Sima Leung has um, taken office, many people are more se becoming more sensitive about RTHK. You were appointed um, by the previous uh, um, administration, but we're talking about a communist uh, ruling Hong Kong. Now, in this um, scenario, will RTHK continue to become a um, an impartial voice um, for Hong Kong? Now, you should tell us that um, you're not really coming in uh, to suppress um, freedom of speech on behalf of the communist um, rulers. Director, all civil servants must abide by um, political neutrality. This is clearly stated in the civil service. Uh, c uh, code, and uh, there are uh, numerous articles making um, various speculations which are unfounded. For civil servants, if uh, a civil servant feels that he's being appointed to fulfill a political mission, uh, he can uh, file a complaint with the uh, Permanent Secretary or the Civil Service Bureau. It's clearly written in the code that under such circumstances, uh, such complaints will not be subject to any form of punishment. I do not believe in Mr. Tang. It's ridiculous. You know nothing about the media, and then you uh, take up this position and you ask people to trust you. Now, there are eight major questions here, so you should answer them, yes or no. You should answer the factual questions, and if you, are, you give unclear answers, you should not be a civil servant. For the eight questions in Mr. James Toe's letter, you should answer them first. Now, if you can't answer them today, uh, fine, uh, I will ask something else. Now, the other point is, if you do not have any professional knowledge, when you make a decision, you should be guided by um, your senior. That's the Director of Bureau. You say that you are a civil servant, but in fact, you're not performing civil service duties. You are, at the same time, the uh, Director, or rather, the Editor-in-Chief of RTHK. So, you're playing two roles. Either you are the uh, you are civil servant, or you are the editor in chief of uh, RTHK. How can you wear two hats? Or you should ask um, this is sold, uh, the secretary to come and give an account. Because if you're not accountable, then a politically accountable official should come and explain things to us. Um, I, I remember I told you back then that you should not uh, take up this appointment. Uh, you should not be uh, as uh, shameless as uh, taking up this appointment as director of broadcasting. But then you took it up anyway. So uh, even if I believed um, you as a person, Mr. Roy Tang, uh, you are playing two roles, so um, on the one hand, you are asked to fulfill certain mission. On the other hand, you should stay politically neutral as a civil servant. You ask people to lodge complaints, but where? Uh, your senior is, um, the, uh, is a bureau director, um, Mr. Greg So, he's um, from DAB. He's also a politician. He is um, patriotic, and he has become a principal official, and that's the problem. So when you talk about complaints, do you uh, file the complaint with the permanent secretary, uh, who will relate the complaint to the secretary? This is a structural problem. He is um, um, uh, he was a DAB member. All right, your time is up, Mr. Wong Ting Kuang. Now, for the five uh, digital audio broadcast casting channels of RTHK, uh, they uh, were commissioned last year. And if people want to listen to DAB channels, they need to buy uh, the uh, relevant radios first. But these radios are quite expensive. So, what in. Um, what incentives can the administration provide to encourage 
people to buy digital audio broadcasting radios to listen to these channels. Director, thank you, Mr. Wong. Uh, first of all, we need to improve the uh, transmission rate first. Um, uh, over the past one and a half years, we have been improving the quality of our transmission stations. On and uh, secondly, we need to step up publicity. Uh, we have been conducting publicity campaigns over the one and a half years, uh, but the most important thing is to have programs to broadcast. So uh, we have started uh, new programs recently. For example, audio book programs and um, a, a program featuring the sounds of the natural environment of Hong Kong, so on and so forth, and we're, we are seeing more programs. Now, one important topic today is community involvement broadcasting service, and we uh, hope that uh, in the coming days we can allocate 14 hours per week uh, for um, broadcasting of programs produced by the community. I hope that these can attract um, more listeners. I think this is a matter of uh, give and take. Um, now, you can provide more uh, programs, but at the same time, listeners will need to pay uh, for the radios. So, will there be any policy um, requiring for example, new cars to be equipped with uh, digital audio uh, broadcasting radios. Uh, it, at present, there is no such requirement. Uh, the radio uh, is only equipped to receive AM and FM signals. Director, now the administration is not going to provide any financial incentive for people to buy DAB radios. As for um, car importers, uh, as I understand, they do have this uh, option. Well, but it's optional, right? People still need to pay. Uh, currently, we uh, just rely on uh, the principles of free market. Uh, one of the very important topics of RTHK is Community Involvement Broadcasting Service, CIBS. Well, we used to have a, th a heated uh, discussion uh, at the panel, but now uh, it seems that we have shifted our focus to target Mr. Roy Tang. I have no particular view on it. Uh, it's been clearly stated in the paper. Um, we have Community Involvement Broadcasting Service as well as the role and future of RTHK. Now, before Mr. Porcher speaks, Ms. Claudia Mo has moved a motion. It's been tabled. I am going to deal with the motion in a moment about um, the uh, RTHK's community involvement broadcasting service and the role in the future of RTHK. Ms. Ms. Mo moves that the panel urges the administration to uh, keep to its promise to pro safeguard the editorial independence of RTHK and will not um, impose any form of political interference. So I will um, um, deal with this motion in a moment. Ms. Tapor Chair. Now, um, two points. First, about the uh, DAB Broadcasting Service. I understand that on the 17th of September last year, it was formally uh, commissioned, but um, there's been a lack of publicity. Now, about uh, the, the, uh, the digital audio broadcasting of DBC is very controversial. I think apart from DBC 100, um, no... Well, very, uh, uh, there, there's been very few listeners. Now, for example, for DAB 35, it's a Cantonese-speaking uh, channel. It provides elderly cultural and education programs. Well, it's very important, but uh, there is a lack of publicity, so you should review the situation. And uh, for uh, if, um, the other uh, channel, well, mostly P uh, RTHK listeners uh, want more information. But uh, then you have... Um, relays of soccer matches and audio programs, etc. But if you want to enjoy a soccer match, you should uh, watch it rather than read it. Uh, and of course, for visually impaired, you produce audio movies. I can understand that. However, uh, these are only catered for the minority, so um, you will get fewer and fewer listeners. So if DBC is barely hanging on, I don't I'm really concerned how you're going to run your channels. Together with the difficulty of DAB radios, I understand that uh, it's not really viable in the, mar in the commercial market. 
I understand from the manufacturer uh, that um, that uh, even uh, Mr. Al Chang um, hasn't uh, paid him yet. Uh, I don't. Well, I can disclose that it's a piece of fact. Ask him. So you should not just work um, without regard to the circumstances. Now about the. Um, uh, program, uh, you have you provide a subsidy of uh, seven hundred uh, seven thousand five hundred for a half hour program and fifteen thousand subsidy for a full hour program. It's just uh, the subsidy is just so little. How can you ask uh, people to produce programs with so little money? I hope that you can uh, consider this. Uh, well, perhaps you don't have time to answer me. Uh, I have only 20 seconds le left. Uh, RTHK is not um, siding with the government all the time. I recall uh, that uh, Ms. Claudia Mo um, did a, a pro program, and then uh, I, I proposed a PNP, and then um, my part was cut. Well, I don't think the RTHK is favoring uh, any anyone at all. Next, Mr. UC Ring. Uh, I want to say something about the uh, CIBS, the Community Involvement Broadcasting Service. Now, to enhance transparency, the public will be consulted uh, about the. Um, uh, programming and uh, there will be public voting. And uh, I understand that political parties uh, which are better resolved can affect um, the voting result. So how uh, can RTHK ensure that it will not become a tool for political oppression? Now for CIBS, we have a um, independent panel comprising seven members. Three of them uh, are scholars and experts in communications and broadcasting, whereas um, another member is familiar with ethnic minority issues. For the remaining two members, we will uh, field experts from the RTHA program advisory panel. As for applicants, there is um, no uh, restriction in terms of their background. So um, political parties will not uh, enjoy uh, any uh, particular uh, favor. And as for public voting, we have an online voting system. Each member of public can only register uh, for the voting process once with his ID card, and he can only vote once. And this will only account for 25% of the total marks. So basically, regardless of, um, uh, of the background of uh, the um, parties, there is no way that that the voting uh, can be rigged. About the uh, $15,000 subsidy per one hour program, it's way higher than the cost of uh, the RTHK's own radio program. If you look at the uh, financial um, uh, or, or the figure or, or our figures, well, basically the cost is between uh, 3000 to 5000 Now we did four or five focus groups. We uh, sought advice from experts, and they agreed that uh, this is a reasonable sum. So you see, wait. So if voting only accounts for 25 percent of the total, if the voting uh, result is such that it's inclined uh, to a particular political view, then um, it's still unfair. I think you should be careful about uh, how you handle the voting result. Otherwise, uh, it, the uh, voting would um, actually mean uh, no voting at all. Actually, there are uh, 11 uh, topics from politics, uh, culture, education, and arts. It covers a wide scope, and each quarter, um, members of the public can um, apply for the uh, program, and there is uh, no, no problem at all. Time is up, so let me also say something. Hey. Regarding this um, CIBS, uh, we did have um, a wide variety of views. Now, the paper is uh, very clear. Uh, it contains um, the uh, selection committee, uh, the number of applications, and so on. It's unfortunate that we cannot go into greater detail on this one. I hope that this is not at last we've heard of this. 
that this is an important role of RTHK. Some um, frequencies, some channels that will be opened up uh, for um, the um, the the um, private um, individuals um, to produce programs. And Mr. Porche mentioned uh, DBC. We're going to have another item on this. Um, the, the member who um, put forward this item uh, is not here with us. And we have um, invited the, the head of um, the DBC, the new head, um, to join us. Where, in fact, um, DBC would like um, to drive um, the, the audience um, towards um, digital broadcasting. I think RTHK is uh, going the, in, in the wrong direction. And they are producing all these uh, minority or niche uh, programming um, to attract um, the audience. I have to clarify that um, DBC is not on its hind leg. Um, the uh, the top guy is uh, not Albert Cheng. It is uh, Wong Chou Bao now. Uh, Albert Cheng has been turfed out. So what we have to do is um, the, to deal with uh, Ms. Cordia Bo's uh, motion. This uh, panel urges uh, the government to uh, live up to its promise and to protect uh, Marty HK's um, autonomy and will not interfere it, uh, with it politically. Ms. Cordia Bo. While RTHK is funded by uh, taxpayers' money, it, is, uh, it engages in uh, public service broadcasting. People may, give, uh, may, may have the misconception that um, funded by uh, the government, it should act as a mouthpiece. I think this is a uh, wrong perception. Taxpayers' money is my money, it is your money. The RTHK should be there to serve uh, the members of the public. Now, with regard to uh, PSB, it should be free from uh, two pressures. The first one is commercial pressure. Uh, there will not be any advertising um, dollars. There will be a stake. Um, they, they would not um, be on the wrong side. They don't have to be worried uh, to be on the wrong side of um, the developers or the um, infant formula producers. Second, it should be free from political interference or political pressure. Now, this um, RTHK in its current form is uh, neither fish nor fowl. Now, the um, director is um, the edit editor-in-chief, uh, Roy Tank, uh, has committed uh, three sins, as I mentioned. Now, this um, motion that I move is uh, stating the obvious. Now, we have seen so many things that, that happen. The director of uh, broadcasting said on two occasions that um, the allegations that uh, we leveled at him are unfounded. They said this twice. We are very worried about this. I'd like to um, reiterate um, this point. I hope that um, members will accept this um, motion. I hope that this uh, will be um, um, voted on uh, by uh, open ballot. Right, this um, uh, motion uh, that is stating the obvious. Uh, we'll be put you to the vote. Uh, let's um, speak to this uh, for one minute. Mr. Chris Jung. Well, Chairman, I object to this motion because she's applying a double standard. Now, first of all, CNC, um, she said that um, th this is um, an official body, and she finds that um, there are problems with um, this um, broadcasting interviewing um, government officials. I and mean, she is uh, brutally interfering with um, editorial independence. And ATV, I think she's acting as if she was um, the, the head of uh, ATV. I think um, what she said and what she does uh, is um, inconsistent with uh, her motion. Mr. Charles Mock. Well, I, I don't think I uh, understand Mr. Christopher Jung. Now, reading this uh, motion, I think we have to be easy oriented instead of being personal. That the motion is asking the administration to safeguard the editorial independence of RTHK. That she, he should not object to this just because uh, Claudia Moore raised it. If um, um, he, he's not happy with the motion, he's welcome to, to amend it. Now, as uh, legal members, when we're called upon to uh, vote on a particular motion, we have to be uh, easy oriented. We should not be personal. I don't think uh, this has anything to, to do with um, the, the remarks that uh, Claudia Mo made about other subjects. Uh, Mr. Long Kuo Hong, well, there is a propaganda um, department um, in China, uh, which is um, under the command of um, the Communist Party. 
that the um, Xinhua news agency is under the um, the, the uh, regime. Mr. Tang uh, is basically saying that uh, we don't have that in Hong Kong, even if um, the government is willing to fund it. Now, now we, we cannot uh, charge any license fee, we cannot um, collect any tax uh, uh, advertising dollars, there may be uh, funding problems. Now, if uh, RTA3 is acting like uh, BBC, uh, Mr. Roy Tang would be acting like uh, Chris Patton. You don't have to be uh, under the command of um, uh, Mr. Greg So. Mr. Wang Tianguang, well, Ms. Claudia Mo said that um, the motion is stating the obvious. Now, if she's uh, stating the obvious, uh, why bother making a motion? This is only common sense. But I can certainly move another motion, which is also common sense, and this is a waste of time. I object to that. Mr. Yu Xiwei, Chairman, in the discussion paper in August 2010, um, the government uh, promulgated the RTHA Charter, which um, enshrines um, the editorial independence of RTHK. I don't think it makes sense for us to vote on this motion. Now, this motion is moved by uh, Ms. Claudia Mo because we have received a letter, all of us, and this uh, letter is uh, considered to be trustworthy, and I've um, really given a ruling that um, the director has to answer all these eight questions. And this is an important issue, um, according to Ms. Claudia Mo, and although this is stating the obvious, she wants to to uh, to put this put forward this motion, uh, Mr. Paul Che. Well, it would be difficult to object to to this if um, uh, you are stating the obvious, like uh, you 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 uh, you saying um, um, all mums are women. Uh, then then, uh, but I don't think I can object to this uh, motion. But it doesn't really make any sense at all to me. All right. So we like we will put um, Ms. Claudia Mo's uh, motion to the vote. Um, any seconder? All right. Let's um, put this to the vote. Uh, this panel urges the administration to um, be true to its pledges and uh, safeguard the editorial independence of RTHK and will not um, carry out any political interference in any shape or form. Right. We have um, to to have an open ballot. Uh, please uh, raise your hand. You don't put down your hand um, until I've um, called your name. Those in favour, please raise their hands. Charles Mock. Hand down, please, uh, Mr. Mock. Mr. Xin Chong Kai. Mr. Claudia Mo. Mr. Paul Che. Mr. Leung Kuo Hong. Mr. Raymond Chan. Mr. Albert Chan. Those against? No objection. Abstention. Any objection, please? Those against? Objection. Abstention. Right, you're objecting to uh, the statement um, that all mums are women. Abstentions. Mr. Yu Si Wing. Mr. Christopher Chung. Mr. Stephen Ho. Mr. Wang Ting Kuang. Right, the motion is carried. Thank you very much, um, Director, and uh, your team. Let's move on to the next item. Alright, next um, item five proposal to inject additional funding into the Cray Smart Initiative. Let's invite the administration in, please. Right, permanent secretary and deputy secretary um, will stay. I'd like to welcome Mr. Jerry Liu, head of Great Hong Kong, and also Mr. Ivan Ho Chang, principal assistant secretary for CDB.
或者我哋请秘书长讲下先，秘书长。Permanent Secretary, please. Chairman, members, this is to、uh, propose an injection of three hundred thousand, three hundred million dollars into、um, Great Smart Initiative.、Well, all these、um, proposals have、um, to be beneficial to the entire creative sector, instead of just any individuals or any companies. Since its inception, we have adopted this partnership approach. It would be for the sector to put forward proposals、uh, for the government to fund them. These、uh, will ensure that、um, the proposals are in line in keeping with、um, the the needs of the sector. Since its inception, we have ear earmarked four hundred four hundred twenty million dollars and twenty one projects. As of last year, the uncommitted funding was、uh, about sixty million dollars. This sixty million dollars is, is, is expected to be exhausted by the end of this year. Over the past、uh, three years.、Uh, All the、um, achievements are set out in the paper. As I said, after the review of、um, the results and the operation of the scheme, the sector and the、uh, stakeholders are happy with、um, the the scheme. And the、um, injection of further funding in the CSI is a testament of、um, the government's、uh, support of、um, the industry. We are proposing、uh, an additional injection of three hundred million dollars. Um, for the、uh, scheme to be operational until 2015-16, and then we take this opportunity uh, to incorporate、um, the DBCS、uh, into the program, the Design Business Collaboration Scheme. It was set up in 2004 to、um, provide funding for the SMEs,、um, for them to. Um, uh, Put forward ideas、um, for funding. This、um, the committee funding is、uh, only about one billion dollars, and this、uh, will be exhausted、uh, by the second half of this year. As since、uh, this has been incorporated, or DSI has been incorporated、uh, into the CSI, we are proposing the DBCS、uh, be incorporated into CSI so that、uh, we have the same pool of funding.、Uh, this arrangement will be conducive、um, to、um, rationalising the, the funding for the creative、um, industry. All the details are set out、um, in the paper, and I hope the members would、uh, support. The injection proposal、uh, subject to members' funding approval, and will、uh, subject to members' approval today. We will seek、uh, funding from the finance committee. All right, director. Now throw the floor open for questions. Mr. Sin Chung Kai, chairman. Having、uh, read the paper, I find that this scheme is、um, worth having, but as far as the entire. Creative industry is concerned.、Um, there is a bit of、um, inconsistencies. The government is supporting the creative industry under this scheme, but in terms of licensing, in terms of TV licensing, the government has been dragging its feet. We haven't seen any decision taken yet. There are a couple of、um, companies that have hired so many people. Producing so many programming、uh, programs, and this is more than, than the three hundred million dollars that the government is injecting into the fund. I think we have to、uh, leverage on the, the the forces, the market forces here, instead of just pumping money into it. Therefore, I, I think we do need to have sectoral、um, support in some sense、uh, because、um, we we may not be able to benefit the, the entire sector. I would、uh, mull over this idea to see whether this is worth supporting in, in terms of funding, but I think that there are lots of inconsistencies in the government's approach. It seems to me that、um, the government is supportive of the creative industry with、um, the, the consolidation of the funding. I think it is、um, a step in the right direction in terms of、um, the, the fund, but I don't think there, there has been any commitment in terms of policy on the part of the government. Hat. Oh, P.S. Policy inconsistency in policies. Chairman,、uh, as the、um, secretary has mentioned on the various occasions,、uh, the licensing of free-to-air TV license is still being considered, and the decision will be announced 
uh, in due course. And in terms of developing the creative industries, we uh, support measure, we have measures to support um, uh, development of the industry. We support uh, products as well as uh, activities. Mr. Sin Chung Kai. No follow up? No. Next, Mr. Charles Mock. Chairman. First, I need to uh, declare my, uh, my interest. I'm also a member of the uh, CSI um, uh, assessment panel. Uh, I support the injection of funding because as far as the creative industry is concerned, um, it does have some effect. But as for the uh, overall uh, if result, I think that there are still outstanding problems yet to be resolved. For um, results, well, just now, um, the administration told us the numerous uh, achievements, etc. But all we see are figures, number of companies and participants uh, involved in the programs, but there is no assessment uh, criteria. Perhaps uh, this, this information is not provided here. Perhaps uh, they do not even have the information. Now, let's say for the uh, 2012 um, fashion show uh, here, uh, it says that it, has, it is a um, record-breaking event involving uh, some uh, hundreds of models. Well, even if you put down figures like these, I don't see uh, how uh, this... Uh, can really facilitate the development of the creative industry. You just adhere to usual practice. You just put down the figures, uh, saying that this is a record-breaking uh, event. Well, uh, well, this time you have 340 models. Well, next time, if you have 350 models, will this uh, better facilitate the development of the fashion industry? I really doubt that. This is really a common um, uh, shortfall of uh, these uh, funding programs. So in terms of um, this program, I wonder if uh, more uh, criteria can be set uh, which can reflect the quality uh, of the result. And, and also, how um, can we make more companies and uh, pa uh, participants to benefit uh, from the initiative? Uh, I have uh, heard that um, very often, large co larger companies will benefit from uh, these uh, funding programs. But for smaller companies which are not familiar with the form filling exercise, uh, they cannot get any help. So, how can you improve on this? Well, uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, about quantity and quality, I can say that. Um, True, uh, we put down mostly figures in the paper, but at the same time, when we subsidize creative individuals and companies in taking part in international competitions, we actually uh, have won 38 international awards over the years, and I can provide further information on this. Now, about in um, benefiting more companies and participants. From the figures, you can see that in terms of business matching and um, exchange of uh, knowledge, we are seeing more and more SMEs taking part in our uh, program. From 27 SMEs in uh, 2007 to over 121, in 2011, and we will continue in this direction. Thank you, Chairman. Next, Mrs. Regina Yip. Chairman, basically, we support the proposal, but my question is for SMEs who, uh, which are in the creative industry, labor shortage is a problem, and they cannot afford uh, high uh, wages to send their designers to take up courses uh, in uh, New York and other cities. So uh, can they benefit from this uh, initiative? Because 
uh, if they are to take part in the international um, creative arena, they must not. Uh, they must uh, have some exposure in other cities in supporting talented, uh, creative uh, individuals to study abroad. We do have uh, such an arrangement, uh, but not much. Uh, uh, for example, for uh, fashion design, uh, in twenty eleven, as in twenty eleven. We subsidize uh, each year two graduates, uh, that is, um, two graduate designers, $500,000 for an overseas internship for one year. Over the past year, that's between 2012 and 13, we have actually increased the quota to four. Two are um, employed designers for the remaining two uh, they are university graduates who are currently studying in uh, postgraduate programs they also get the opportunity to study abroad but can you increase the amount uh, I mean for local fashion designers well if you uh, everybody knows if you want to succeed in the fashion world, um, Rita, the, devil, the author of the uh, Devil Wears Prada, uh, said that the fashion you must get some acclaim in the uh, fashion world, uh, like uh, a, a good article in Vogue or that um, a celebrity has worn your uh, design, and they must have some exposure. Um, in uh, cities like Paris and uh, New York and London. Chairman, let me supplement. Now for um, training, support uh, for a longer period of time uh, abroad, well, um, larger subsidy is required. And this is our next step. Uh, for our first step, I, in fact, for the two-week Paris fashion show held recently, we have already supported eight new fashion companies in Hong Kong um, and 12 designers from these eight companies to go to Paris and at the same time have uh, uh, um, erect pop-up stalls and during the bi-week uh, fashion show, they can um, display their work and the um, famous designers uh, also were also interested in um, checking out the the uh, work of our local designers. So on Ting Kuang, the DAB, uh, of course, uh, support in principle the injection of the three hundred million dollars into the CSI. But uh, I want to ask a question in relation to the paper. The um, the uh, targeted beneficiary uh, is a non-profit making organizations. So uh, what non-profit organ non-profit making organizations and individuals can apply for this fund? And uh, in paragraph four of the paper, even the um, government departments or the uh, CSI itself can apply for the fund. So. Have we seen any uh, precedents uh, before? Because this is this seems uh, quite rare. So, you. Chairman, about non-profit making organizations or projects being non-profit making by nature, what we mean is that the organization should be non-profit making and usually they are trade associations or chambers of commerce which are non-profit making and after they get the funding when they promote uh, the pro or implement the projects it should not be for the purpose of bringing in profit for their own organization on the other hand if a trade association or a chamber of commerce is, uh, uh, organizes an exchange tour with youth participants. 
then the students could、um, make profit, and individual companies. Which take part in the project could be profit making, but the organizer of the project should not be profit making. And may I reply to the other question first?、Uh, as for、um, government departments of the、um, Create Hong Kong,、um, they can also apply for the funding. That's because the scheme was a new scheme、um, set up in 2009. We wanted to provide. Different channels、uh, to facilitate the development of the creative industry, and the uh,、um, and that c- could be done by either Create Hong Kong or other government departments. And we do have、uh, previous examples in which、um, RTHK、uh, units. Apply for funding for、um, shooting of doc- of a program or a documentary, promoting the creative industry, and so far, Create Hong Kong has not、uh, applied for funding because, indeed, there could be、um, a latent conflict of interest because we could be、um, approving funds for ourselves for para- in、um, such transition in para. One of the paper, the Create Hong Kong received、uh, 269 applications, out of which 121 were approved, and the success rate、uh, was、uh, less than 45 percent. So, what was the reason? Is it because they did not qualify, or because of a lack of funding? Because we have, you have close to、uh, 39 million dollars、uh, funding amount. So, what was the reason for these unsuccessful applications? Mr. Charles Mock just now also said that in re,、uh, evaluating the、uh, result of this scheme, you only have、uh, quantitative、um, data, but not qualitative data. So you can just、uh, double all the figures and、uh, make it seem uh, that uh, it, you're getting good results. Now there are also criticisms that. In fact, under the scheme, we do not see more creative talents being nurtured. Only those who know the way、uh, to apply for funding、uh, could eventually、um, get help. So, can you tell us uh, that um, the funding is being used appropriately, what, rather than、uh, everything being just a game of numbers, Chairman? Now let me respond to the last part of your question: How we can improve our results? Well, at the time when the initiative was set up, we have seven main objectives. Basically, there are three goals.、Um, first, we nurture talents and startup companies, and second, we. Tap overseas markets and expand local markets for the creative industry, and thirdly, we organise、uh, large events and major events to promote Hong Kong as a creative hub, and we follow these three directions. In particular, in nurturing talents, definitely we need、uh, to have some.、Um, Quantifiable indices for、uh, members'、uh, reference, but in terms of participating individuals and companies, after taking part in the scheme, I suppose there should be improvement in terms of the quality、uh, or the knowledge、uh, acquired. Chairman, he hasn't answered、uh, the crux of my question, Mr. Albert Chan. Chairman, now I have、uh, made this similar point when we talked about the development of creative industries on other occasions. Of course, we need to nurture opportunities for talents and startups, but in the event of、uh, the use of public funding. 
then it, the funds should be used for uh, boosting local productivity. <coughs> for example, uh, fashion, design. Well, say if you subsidize uh, designers to go to a fashion show, uh, you may uh, the, the the designer may get um, a claim uh, in the show. But what happens afterwards? It should uh, help uh, the employment uh, and the fashion industry in Hong Kong. So. In terms of funding support, will there be any requirement um, that it be related to um, the manufacturing industry in Hong Kong? Say you may uh, promote your product overseas, but well, let's say uh, if the um, manufacturing base in Hong Kong. Then, uh, if the product is related to uh, the um, local manufacturing industry, then uh, more marks could be awarded to the product. I think that this will help uh, to promote the local manufacturing industry. Hong Kong, they come. Chairman, I agree that uh, we should do more in this direction. As the permanent secretary said a moment ago, uh, this. Under this uh, design business collaboration scheme, we do have um, the plan to encourage the SMEs in Hong Kong, including those um, that, that have um, the um, ability to um, engage designers in Hong Kong and to, to get on with um, the, the production. It is um, it is uh, different from uh, the, the other way around. I mean, this is something that is going on, and I hope that um, that we will be able to um, support this uh, financially under the CSI. But I, I I do agree that we should do more in this direction, Mr. Chen. For those um, that have been funded in the past, uh, how many of them uh, do engage in uh, manufacturing in Hong Kong? Um, there may be 99 percent of them um, involve uh, production in the mainland. Well, Chairman, I have to um, get hold of the information from the applicants um, regarding um, the, the uh, place of manufacturing. And this is not um, compulsory information, but if members consider this uh, important, uh, certainly we can include this information. Right, I hope that this uh, will be included as um, the um, compulsory information that they have um, to to submit, and for those uh, that engage production locally, they should be given high priority. Right, Mr. Porche, in the appendix, um, we have um, a whole series of um, success uh, successful examples. Of commercialization, I think that um, we are dealing with uh, more tangible inventions, and we can um, ascertain um, the the um, the success or otherwise of these uh, programs. The CSI it is more intangible; it is more in support of uh, ideas. With um, the consolidation, how are you going to split up the money? Is it going to be fifty-fifty, or is it? Uh, the case that you would attach more importance to a uh, successful commercialization. Second, if uh, we can encourage um, more successful commercialization, uh, we should uh, devote more funding. Uh, what would, um, would you consider this in your uh, funding allocation? Mrs. Regina Ip um, raised um, the question about um, the top notch. Designers. Now, should we uh, nurture more up-and-coming um, producers or directors, or should we um, really uh, support uh, someone like uh, Lee On, um, or sh should we uh, allocate the resources or the funding uh, more uh, equally, or should we um, 
pick and choose、um, those、uh, top-notch、um, designers who who can excel in Paris. Now these、um, people um, um, are, are really、um, achieving success、uh, through their own efforts.、Um, we may support、um, Leon,、um, the, the equivalent of Leon for the first production, but not、um, the the,、um, the the Pi movie. Right for new、uh, funding at this、uh, present stage, we hope that in the coming two years, ten billion dollars、uh, will be earmarked、um, for the、um, DRCS or DBCS. The government is contributing、um, into the,、um, the the fund on a fifty-fifty basis. And they would be able to get、um, one hundred thousand、um, dollars financial、uh, support over the past、uh, three years.、Um, over the past、uh, three years of operation, we did poll the participating、um, organizations, and for those、uh, who who like this program,、um, each time、uh, each deal、uh, would be something like thirty thousand to fifty thousand dollars. So we can share in the the the、um, the success of、um, the、uh, their initiatives, can we? Well, we like to to make this as simple as possible for funding support、um, that that is、um, that that is on a larger scale.、Um, there is no element of、uh, sharing、um, the the achievement, but、um, the、uh, T and D does have another program. Any industry,、uh, as long as、um, they are、um, optimizing or they they are、uh, branding、um, their own um, um, products, like the BUD,、uh, then the the government will be contributing half a million dollars, and the、um, the funding will be on the, on a fifty fifty basis, and that that would be a larger scale、uh, support. Permanent secretary, first simply chairman. The、uh, funding is uh, really uh, on a smaller scale. If、um, we we、uh, we share the uh, the, the achievements, uh, then there would be、uh, more complicated. But I mean, we do have similar arrangement in、um, film production. This is Virginia. Well, the the、um, funding is so small. What what is the use of it? Now why? Is it that it is also open to、uh, government departments? If the departments are running short of money, they they can certainly seek、um, funding from the financial secretary. Why did they have to compete with、um, the, the private sector? I'm I'm not clear about、um, the the criteria. Are enterprises、um, allowed to、um, to make the application?、Uh, what sort of、um, Enterprises、um, can make the application. The the funding uh, is um, so on such a small scale. How can you improve or help with the competitive edge of、um, the enterprises? Yes, Chairman. The idea of the DBCS is、um, targeted at、um, the SMEs. That they. Probably have never engaged、uh, any designers to provide、um, the design service. So the idea was to implement this uh, scheme, uh, whereby、um, they 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 would be encouraged to take the first step.、Uh, the funding may not be on a large scale.、Uh, let's say there is a company that produces、um, handheld torches. They can come up with、uh, their own design, and we. Um, we, that doesn't. This doesn't include the production of prototype, and that that would be more expensive. The T and D、uh, can offer other assistance. So this is design and branding, isn't it? So one hundred thousand dollars is not a lot of money, but that that represents、um, the beginning. And I hope that they would be able to achieve something、uh, with this funding, Mr. Raymond Chen. 
Well, Mr. Liu has not quite answered my question. What is the reason for the failure? Can you be more specific about your question? I've got one minute. Let me uh, put the question again. Uh, 269 projects, uh, 121 was approved. The success rate uh, was um, less than 50 percent. What are the reasons for the failure? Well, in most cases, um, they fail to uh, uh, get the approval uh, because in their proposal, um, the, there is an element of um, profit uh, with regard to the the, the applicant uh, organization. So as I said um, earlier on, uh, this is uh, not um, allowed under the scheme. Second, we have to be um, careful that um, um, we have to be careful about um, the way they, they spend the funding. I mean, if um, they spend all the funding on the um, uh, on 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 the, on the payroll uh, that that is not allowed. Although we wouldn't uh, reject the application, well, it's not because uh, you run out of funding that that um, they are rejected. No, not at all. Okay, then we have to uh, bring this item to a close. Now, uh, this um, Create Smart initiative has been running for some time, and I hope that um, the administration. Uh, will collate uh, members' views and uh, come up with a response. Basically, members are supportive of um, this injection of funding. Right, let's move on to. Now, when you uh, redesign the uh, criteria, would you consider our views? Well, not not just uh, not just um, uh, taken as um, uh, as uh, reference. So please um, take on board our suggestions, otherwise I'm going to block you. Okay, Permanent Secretary is going to stay behind for the next item. We have um, uh, Mr. Ho, Mr. Wong, and Mr. Liu, who will be staying behind. And we have um, Mr. Vince, Mr. Vincent Liu and Ms. Uh, Katie Fong. And from the uh, DBC, we have um, Chief Executive Officer Mr. Mac Yun Sao. Right, in relation to these um, shareholding changes of the DBC, a couple of meetings ago, members brought this up uh, for discussion. However, the member uh, who uh, put forward this item, Ms. Sit Ho, is not here with us. Uh, those uh, members from the, uh, Democrat, from the uh, Democratic camp um, who are concerned about this uh, don't seem to be here either. We have uh, with us um, the um, management of um, the DBC, uh, Mr. Mac, uh, Mr. Albert Cheng, and Mr. Morris Holes wrote in to say that they are not going to to to, to come here uh, because um, because according to them, I am biased. And Mr. Wong Chou Bao is not um, is out of town. Now there were a lot of um, discussion about a political oppression. Uh, and so on. Now, um, there, there were uh, there were so many um, outstanding issues arising from the DBC. I, I know that uh, Mr. Mac um, did attend um, uh, some of the uh, other meetings before. Now, Mr. Mac is um, serving on um, in DBC uh, in, his, in, his, in his capacity as uh, CEO. Now. Because of the time constraint, we're going to have um, the the education panel later on. I don't think we're going to have uh, any heated um, discussion because a lot of the members are not here. Perhaps I'd like to invite um, the permanent secretary to um, say a few words, and then I'll throw the floor open for questions. Mr. Mack, you're welcome to put questions, but what you said that uh, will not be protected by the powers and privileges ordinance. And I hope uh, that the members uh, would. Uh, put their questions. We will uh, bring the meeting to an end um, by 4.30 or with an extension at 4.45. Yes, thank you, Chairman. 
No, I'll be uh, as precise as possible. Just now, um, Chairman has, has already stated background of the incident. Now, the uh, directors of the DBC uh, has uh, resolved the dispute. The shareholding arrangement uh, has been completed, and the uh, broadcasting of the DBC has resumed uh, in January. And we support the relevant company in enhancing the broadcasting quality to cater for the needs of the public. And um, perhaps uh, I will uh, in invite uh, Mr. Liu to uh, say something about the uh, breach of the license. DBC uh, encountered a, a problem in October and the author authority uh, had uh, all along been paying attention to um, the broadcasting licenses and the broadcasting service. And after the cessation of uh, or suspension of broadcasting service, the uh, CA already imposed an 80,000 Dollar fine on DBC on the breach of um, on the first breach of um, the uh, broadcasting license, which and the eighty dollar fine uh, was the uh, maximum um, penalty possible. And after the cessation of the uh, broadcasting service, the DBC was uh, taken over by the t the rec temporary receiver, and uh, the CA um, asked the uh, DBC's receiver to. Uh, um, the questions uh, to which it, um, there was no reply, and because of a serious breach, and um, the uh, com the authority considered uh, invoking the relevant procedure to suspend the license for 30 days, and also invited uh, the DBC to make representation within t 28 days on the proposed suspension of the license. Whilst waiting for DBC to make representation, it was known that um, there would be a possible share uh, transfer of shares of DBC and on the um, 10th of January, the uh, Communication Authority uh, granted the change of uh, shareholding uh, of the shares held by the uh, Mr. Albert Chang um, uh, and two other uh, directors uh, to Ms., uh, Ms., Mr. Ho and Mr. Um, Ronald Colley to uh, Mr. Wang Shou Bao. Uh, uh, they own 40% of, sh of the shares and the uh, broadcasting service of DBC resumed on the 28th of January upon completion of the transfer of the 40% of shares. And upon um, resu resumption of service, the DBC was able to uh, resume the full-fledged broadcasting service and the transfer of shares was granted. And throughout the um, ce cessation of broadcasting service, uh, which lasted for about two months, because of um, the serious nature of the breach, uh, the, the authority considered uh, that penalty should be imposed. However, uh, at the same time, the authority also considered uh, that uh, f further in interruptions might be caused to DBC uh, service if the penalty is imposed. So, uh, in the end of the day, the authority uh, decided to impose uh, the, uh, a penalty of uh, $200,000. Um, and that was the maximum penalty uh, permissible uh, for a second breach of the license and uh, for the uh, suspension of broadcasting service of uh, uh, close to two months, the authority has indicated to DBC that this is a serious breach and if uh, there is further contraventions, um, a more severe penalty might be imposed in the future. So much uh, for my uh, briefing. I think that, in all fairness, I should uh, read the uh, letter. Uh, in fact, uh, it's just now I said uh, they scolded me, but uh, they did not just scold me. Um, on the 6th of February this year, we received the letter of the panel inviting us to um, attend this meeting on the 11th of March on the uh, shareholding changes of DBC uh, and uh, chairman uh, in is, is biased uh, in terms of this issue of shareholding changes of DBC. The uh, our chairman has also um, written articles in the newspaper and offered his uh, views. And also, whilst we make representation at the panel meeting, we're not uh, protected uh, under the logical, uh, under CAP 382 logical powers and privileges ordinance. And because of the uh, confidentiality uh, requirement, we are unable to uh, speak f our minds freely. So we are unable to attend this meeting on the 11th of March 2013. We have all along been uh, sincere in resolving the, dis the uh, director's dispute. Uh, and we will uh, give a, an account in due course and publish a full article in the newspaper. And 
we uh, have retrieved uh, the uh, capital and we will continue to invest in the DBC um, to serve uh, the, the Chinese community worldwide. And these words are in quotes. Um, our shares have been uh, bought. It shows that the uh, shareholding issue has been resolved. We'd like to thank uh, members concerned uh, on the DBC issue, and we thank you for, uh, and we urge our members to continue to support DBC. Mr. Albert Chang uh, attended our panel meetings before, but um, according to this letter. Uh, this is the reason why he's not attending this time. But what has it to do with D100? Anyway, uh, any member, any questions from members? Three minutes each. Let's see who else. Mr. Christopher Chong, Mr. Paul Chair, Mr. Yu Si Wing, and Mr. Wang Ting Kuo. All right, Mr. Herbert Chen. I strongly uh, uh, reprimand uh, Mr. Albert Chen for his remarks. Uh, everyone uh, has uh, his uh, views. Well, um, he also uh, said, uh, makes, you also make some remarks about Mr. Roy Tan, director of RTHK, so he doesn't need to attend. Well, we all have um, views about um, Mr. Wong Shou Bao. And uh, for supporting views, uh, when he heard supporting views, he attended the meeting. When the me when the views were not in his favour, uh, he chose not to attend. So uh, he is just using the panel. So I strongly reprimand his conduct. He is uh, really shameless. He just um, used uh, the uh, public to so that he could get his money back. And I support um, Chairman. He really sees the ugly side of of this person. This is really a commercial dispute. Well, um, originally he said that um, the broadcasting should go um, back to the people, but now the broadcasting service actually uh, is working for the uh, communist uh, China, and he even um, raised uh, asked people to help him raise money for the court case. And when he said that the voice should go back to the people, he talked. Uh, he said that uh, this is a political oppression, etc. And uh, he just uh, criticized people online. Uh, but he would. Not, uh, he is unwilling to come to this meeting and explain to us. He uh, got his money back and he returned the station to Mr. Wang Xiaobao. Um, all the politically sensitive programs are now cancelled. All the program hosts uh, who are considered more politically sensitive, um, they are, have all disappeared. Mr. Mack, I have this question. Now, there is a saying that the voice now goes back to the communists, apart from uh, entertainment programs, other programs uh, which gives uh, rather harsh criticisms on the government have now disappeared. So what is your uh, response to this, that Mr. Albert Chang, after getting back his money, have returned the voice to the communists? Mr. Mack. Well, I uh, would like to invite members who would like to express their views to come to my stations uh, so that I don't need to make fo phone calls to each and every one of you. So how can you uh, – uh, what's your response to this saying that the voice goes back to the communists? I am working very hard because sometimes the producer um, – Tell, tells me that uh, he c calls you, but you're unwilling to attend. I'm not talking about guests of the programs. I'm talking about hosts um, with con uh, who ha have contracts with the station. Now, um, radio hosts, they can have their own uh, views and positions, but they can also uh, invite uh, guests and members of the public to air their views freely. What about the several million dollars? Uh, the elderly uh, has been cheated. Now, it has nothing to do with me, uh, but the, the several million dollars is the reason why I'm staying behind uh, DBC. I did not cheat the elderly uh, in the sense that they, uh, they bought uh, DB, uh, radios because of DBC. Salam so home. I also uh, attended the DBC program and spoke last week. 
Mr. Mac, I think you don't understand this point. Of course, you will invite different guests. Um, this is what you're suggesting, right? That there are different platforms for you to air your views. But as a, as a media organization, you have uh, um, your responsibilities. Now, let's say if I work here, I uh, cannot be told uh, that I cannot uh, express a particular view, so on and so forth, because I need to be neutral. But I understand that there is nothing as um, absolute neutrality. Mr. Albert Chan already asked you this question. Now, there are uh, hosts uh, who are independent but who are non-neutral, and they have all disappeared from the station. Even if they're not neutral, people can choose whether they listen to the program. You cannot have, uh, for example, a neutral supermarket. You just put all the goods on the shelves and let people choose. What about the commentary programs? Do you have any um, policy um, suggesting that uh, the uh, communists should not be criticized? Well, we have a station for or a channel for the ethnic minority, and we also have other channels hosting independent programs. I want to host um, political commentary programs as well. Well, and I uh, was working in RTHK. I worked with um, Sachi Pui Heng, and uh, I uh, also did uh, this kind of programs, and I also want to have more programs like that. I mean, political commentary programs. I really want to invite uh, members from different political factions to come. So can I go and criticize the government uh, at your program? Yes. Well, because uh, Raymond Wong, um, well, he did really had a hard time. Uh, RTHK didn't welcome him. The now didn't welcome him. Um, Sir Raymond Wong, this week, if he's free, any time, do come to our station. All right. Let's not go off track, Mr. Chris Chung. No, my time is not up yet. Is it up yet? Uh, my question is, do you have any plan? Because you ha uh, you're wasting your channels. There are five um, channels that are not uh, broadcasting anything. Mr. Chris Chung, now the matter uh, was stirred up to such an extent uh, we had uh, several meetings at Lechko, and uh, the uh, protests were staged outside, and now everything's come to an end. My concern uh, is uh, this, Mr. Mack. Now, um, he's got the money back, and I'd like to ask, first of all, the administration. Now, Mr. Wong Shou Bao got the remaining 40% or the 40% of the uh, shares, so his heat is sole shareholder. What is the percentage of shares he holds? And Mr. Mack, have you been facing any sort of um, in pressure directing you to say something or not to say something? Are you the mouthpiece of the Communist Party? Can you uh, explain to us one question for the administration. After transfer of shares, is Wong Shou Bao, Bao now the largest shareholder? What's the percentage? Well, there are five uh, shareholders in DBC. Uh, Mr. Wong has 60% uh, um, of shareholding. Mr. Mike, um, can you will you answer Mr. Chong's um, other question, please? I can stake um, my uh, character on this, I was under pressure. I'm not sure whether I should say this or not. Well, please do. But I will not be protected, would I? I, I think I can say this. I uh, am liable to be arrested, but that's fine. I was under pressure uh, that um, for the um, political programs, uh, we have to uh, give a voice to the people. I am telling the truth. 
Are you under any influence? Uh, there were talks about um, the central, the western, uh, uh, bringing pressure to to bear on you, visible or invisible. Well, no. Uh, the visible uh, pressure is that uh, we have to do um, uh, make the best of the program, so we can criticize government, but we have to give a voice to the people. Are you the mouthpiece of the communist? Well. Uh, for my um, upbringing, I, I'm not to suppose. I'm not. I don't think I can do anything like that. If I uh, am silenced, uh, I, I would be under political persecution. Mr. Paul Jay, well, I'm a bit concerned uh, about what Mr. Max said. He said that uh, one of the reasons why he um, uh, struggles on is um, that that um, he is concerned about the, the elderly people buying all these um, digital radios now. Many uh, digital radios um, are, are lying unsold. Now the um, the person concerned has collected the money, and um, and that's it. Now we are talking about a fit and proper person here. There should be some criteria uh, for that. Uh, there is a penalty of um, two hundred thousand dollars or eighty thousand dollars, and the, the person concerned has collected the money, and and everything is no concern of him. There seems to me that um, someone has uh, really got away scot free. Now my question is, uh, with regard to this uh, transfer, the 46 percent uh, shareholding, what criteria uh, was uh, were were um, adopted uh, in relation to um, the transfer of shareholding? Do did you have any uh, objective criteria in relation to this uh, massive transfer of shareholding? What criteria did you use? And you also said that um, the uh, DBC has resumed uh, on January the 18th. Have you really resumed uh, full service? There are seven uh, channels, and there are clear specula- uh, stipulations uh, regarding um, the the content. I don't think you're, you're abiding by um, the condition. It seems to me that there is a continuous uh, violation here. Chairman, on the first question uh, regarding. Um, the shareholding changes. Uh, what criteria did we consider? Now, what we consider are after the um, change of uh, shareholding, whether they are able to measure up to the statutory requirements. I.e., uh, this uh, broadcast it cannot be a subsidiary company. Second, we have to consider whether there is any cross uh, media ownerships. Or whether the um, shareholders are ordinarily uh, residing uh, in Hong Kong, all these are criteria that we, we consider. Also, we have to um, ascertain uh, whether, as a result of the shareholding transfer, um, the uh, broadcasting is uh, able to provide the broadcasting uh, services. Now, regarding uh, DBC's um, broadcast, the there are seven channels, and there are two, um, or one for ethnic minorities, and the other one has to be a talk radio. It used to be called the talk radio channel. For the other five, they have to be around the clock, although um, there is no uh, specification regarding the, the type of channels. DBC is uh, providing uh, services um, in keeping with um, the licensing conditions. Mr. Yu Xiwei, Chairman, thank you. Now, the DBC saga uh, has some um, really implications on the members of the public. The government seems to be really powerless, and they're, they're resorting to um, to uh, penalties um, or fines, will the uh, government consider uh, suspending the license in future? Now the DBC has um, sustained uh, losses, and I am sure that it will be difficult for you uh, operationally for some time as you go along. It, how likely is it that um, you you find it difficult to carry on, and you will uh, suspend the service? Can you give us the assurance that the service will continue? Uh, uninterrupted. Um, Chairman, in dealing with um, this issue, is there anything, uh, any lesson that we can draw from that? Prime Minister Liu? 
Under the law, it is、um, stipulated that、um, the communications authority can impose some、um, penalties for the、uh, fines、um, on, on the previous two occasions, eighty thousand, two hundred thousand dollars, and they, they were the maximum allowable under the law. We also、um, considered. Uh, whether there should be a temporary suspension of the license, that this is the maximum、uh, penalty that can be imposed、uh, by the CA. We did consider that. Subsequently, DBC、uh, made it clear that they, they would be able to resume the service, and the, the audience、uh, will also、uh, request uh, that that、uh, service be resumed.、Uh, so we decided that、um, a penalty of two hundred thousand dollars. Uh, was imposed、uh, in lieu of、um, the the、um, suspension of license. Would there be any review? Well, all these are all these penalties are in the legislation. Depending on the nature of、uh, violations, we would impose、um, the the penalty accordingly. Mr. Mack, any、uh, any disruption to service? Well, it would be difficult for me to say in this regard, but.、Um, Uh, Funding-wise,、uh, there are no problems. Previously, the suspension—I'm not sure whether it was、uh, the suspension was due to any funding problems. Now, at the shareholding、uh, meetings,、uh, we have an investment、uh, period of、uh, two or three years. Now, the question that you put to me—let me say this:、uh, in my capacity as chairman of the panel, I have to. Uh, chair the meeting in accordance with、uh, the rules of procedure, and I have to、uh, respect the views of individual members. The, 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 the views、uh, may be biased, but I have to, to let them have a chance. We did have two special meetings in the past at the request of、uh, individual members. It's just like、uh, you、uh, bringing up a particular subject. I would not、uh, debar you from doing doing so. There is nothing I, I no lesson I, I should draw from that. Um, the only thing I would do is、um, to to disallow somebody to to to、um, create、um, certain subjects、um, repeatedly. Now, in this、uh, panel, it is、um, members first. This is、um, the responsibility that that I have. Any members putting any questions, however bizarre the questions are, will be will be allowed、uh, to bring them up、uh, for discussion. Mr. Wang Ting Kuang. Uh, Mr. Wong is not here. Mr. Raymond Chan,、uh, Mr. Albert Cheng, Mr. Morris Ho are not attending today's meeting. I feel very, very disappointed. And in this、uh, letter, the reasons uh, cited uh, for not attending the meeting are, are really、uh, ridiculous. Now they they may distrust、um, the chairman. They may distrust me. But when they came to to us、uh, for help, we adopted an impartial attitude. We didn't come down on on either side. We had the two special meetings. Mr. Quek So、uh, mentioned this、uh, as a commercial dispute. The government doesn't have a role in it, and the government should not、uh, interfere. I think I should、uh, really commend、uh, Mr. So for his、um, wise judgment. And all these commercial disputes could be resolved、uh, with money. Now his、uh, letter doesn't mention commercial disputes. If、um, this can be resolved、uh, with money, I don't know what what situation this、uh, falls into. I I would urge from、um, the new CEO, if、uh, Mr. Wang Chaobao、uh, were to interfere with you politically, please come to this、uh, panel. We may not give you the same um the the same、uh, treatment that、uh, we did. Um, to to the previous、uh, management, I don't think we should give、uh, too much of a plug、uh, to a uh, uh, an internet radio here. Now, when、um, Albert Chain came here,、um, he talked about political interference. Now the、um, political deal、uh, or the deal has、uh, been been cut. Should he come back to us and tell us uh, uh, that uh, that?、Um, Or the the whole situation. Mr. Wong、uh, is、um, a big shareholder with six、uh, percent of the shareholding. Now, when the license was issued,、um, it was very stringent.、Uh, today, in order to save、um, the the station,、um, are you trying to、uh, let the、uh, the management、uh, get away with whatever shareholding that they can manage to, to get away with? Are you going to pursue Mr. Albert Chain? Mr. Liu, it is the licensee that that、um, 
was in contact with us, um, uh, and it was um, the uh, the receiver that was uh, in contact with us um, uh, prior to today. Under the law, we have a clear definition of a fit and proper person, um, the track record of um, that particular person, um, the the um, track record uh, regarding um, the the character, or whether there there were any criminal records and so on. When the CA considered all this uh, information, it was um, decided that um, the the uh, application for change of shareholding uh, could be approved. Mr. Liu said that um, he would not approach uh, Mr. Cheng. I think uh, Mr. Cheng did approach um, uh, Mr. Quick, so, um Well, there is no question of um, uh, cancelling um, the the um, the case, and this is merely a commercial um, dispute. Mr. Chen, what the senior citizens uh, were uh, deceived um, in the sen in the sense that um, there was um, a fundraising to the tune of five million dollars. Many senior citizens um, did donate. Money, and that amounted to five million dollars. So I would like to clarify uh, that, that um, the senior citizens uh, were cheated out of the money, not because of the the uh, digital radio that they bought. Now, Mr. Um, uh, Albert Chang um, um, tried to uh, act as if um, he 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 was in a difficult position, and he cheated people uh, because of the fundraising to the tune of five million dollars. Right, you don't have to answer this, and um, because it's got nothing to do with you. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all very much for coming.